Hello, good evening. Uh, welcome to this session of electronics and experimental methods. Uh, let me thank uh, Mr. Gandhi sir you know, for giving me an opportunity to share uh, my uh, share uh, knowledge on this particular topic. And also thanks to Bharti for giving me an opportunity. So friends, uh, we are discussing uh, this topic since last uh, three lectures and uh, we have lots of deliberations on electronics or the fundamentals or the basic components of the electronics. And today we'll be focusing more on optoelectronic devices. So uh, it's like a, a optoelectronics uh, emerges uh, uh, emerges and uh, due to the emergence of optoelectronic technology, we are having lot lots of uh, changes uh, into the electronic circuitry and again lots of applications we have so in today's session we'll be trying to focus on that so already uh, we have seen the semiconductor devices uh, wherein we have seen the diodes uh, then like, like uh, how the junctions can be formed uh, then the transistors how different types of the transistors can be work uh, like a bjt npn and pnp transistor how the biasing of the transistor and how it will be utilized. Uh, if we have different parameters uh, like uh, current gain and uh, rest of the parameter alpha, beta and gamma. And depending upon the values of current gain, uh, different applications of transistors are there. And to fetch these applications, we can adopt the typical circuitry of the transistors that we have seen in last lecture. So you can go back to the recorded video and you can see how transistors can work. Then uh, some field effect uh, uh, devices uh, that we'll see like homo and heterojunction devices. We call it the field effect transistors or the uh, MOSFETs, metal oxide field effect transistors. So that we will see uh, in like uh, that just we have skip. So, so we'll see in next lecture. Uh, then like again, another thing is the device characteristics. How the characteristics of the transistors are there like input characteristics and the output characteristics. So if we see the input characteristics, then we know how do we get the cut-in voltage and how it is utilized or useful for uh, for the application purpose of uh, application purpose. And then if we see the output characteristics of the transistor, then we know once we see the output characteristics of the transistor, we can uh, we can get some information about uh, like uh, uh, we are having three different regions in output characters of the transistor that we have seen uh, like active region, saturation region and cutoff region. So depending upon the application, uh, depending upon the application of the transistor, we can operate transistor into particular regions. So that also we have seen that the frequency dependence and applications. So as we know, uh, there are applications of the transistors like uh, amplifier, then the oscillators. So we'll discuss uh, uh, while discussing operational amplifiers and its applications. So before that, we'll see uh, RC coupled or rest of the types of the uh, amplifiers also, uh, which are based on the transistors. So this is what we have seen till date. And now in today's session, uh, we are trying to focus on optoelectronic devices. And if we see uh, the optoelectronic devices, then we know the mainly solar cells, photo detectors, or the LEDs or OLEDs. Now, as we know, because being an aspirant of NET set or the gate examination, we must focus on the recent trends also. So, in that way, we can focus on organic LEDs, how it works, what are the you know, modes of operations, and all. So that we will try to focus in today's session. Then, in next lecture, uh, we'll discuss about rest of the parameters. So in that way, uh, let us move to the topic of today's discussion. So we have seen this. So uh, here just I want to show you the LED. If we discuss LED, uh, simply we know uh, with the inventions of semi, uh, like uh, not inventions of semiconductor, but we can say uh, like around uh, uh, like 1980s or like late 70s, uh, we can see uh, there is a huge uh, references about LEDs. But we know the most of the LEDs were like uh, uh, red or the green LEDs. But uh, uh, like researchers could not get the white LED. 
and as we know uh, around 19 uh, 19 uh, like uh, uh, just uh, 30 20 30 years back or the 20 years back not uh, too much we can say there was a uh, like a invention of the blue chip or the blue component of the led and because of that blue component of the led now it is possible to get the white led we call it as a w led so it is only possible because of invention of the blue led and now as we know uh, so lots of research is going on in the domain of led and because of that we are having multicolor leds we are having uh, the led which can emit different lights also so these all things are possible because of development in the field of phosphors phosphor or we called as optical materials and again in the in similarly uh, there are uh, uh, there are development in organic leds also so when we uh, try to make the led then we know we need a phosphor which must be doped with certain lanthanide ions so like trivalent lanthanide ions we uh, specifically dope and then accordingly if we dope the samarium or if we dope the europium into any of the host material or the, any of the suitable host material then we know we must get the red color if we dope the terbium ion then we know uh, we must get the green color that can emit around 550 nanometer then if we dope uh, like a, a disposium then uh, we must have a dy3 plus then we must have the yellow color so in that way different colors are emitted by the uh, by the leds just uh, because of the uh, doping of lanthanide ions so you must remember a uh, trivalent lanthanide ions are useful to get the different colors along with that some transition elements also can be doped into the suitable host material so that we can get uh, get the specific color of the led so that also we will see uh, in coming slides so if we see the led then main difference is material is more exotic than silicon used in ordinary diodes or the transistors means in case of the led uh, here we are not using only the silicon or the germanium that is what uh, mostly used in a uh, simple pn junction diode so here uh, we have uh, different types of the material as i have mentioned like some of the category of the material like vanadates tungstate or some material like a fluorides uh, then silicates and these all materials are suitable to get the led but again as i have mentioned these material must be incorporated with the activators uh, like a trivalent lanthanide ions so when electron flows through led so losses energy by emitting a photon of a light rather than vibrating lattice and that is what uh, the difference between ordinary light and led in case of ordinary diode not the led ordinary diode so where we cannot get the emission of the light or the, the there is no emission of the light but in case of the led here instead of when electron flows through the led uh, losses energy by emitting a photon of light rather than vibrating light is mean it is not producing the heat it produces a light then led efficiency is 30 percent compared to the incandescent bulb at 10 percent okay so uh, we can see how the leds are more efficient as compared to incandescent bulb then must supply current limiting resistor in series uh, so like figure on two hole drop across the led aim for 1 to 10 milliampere of current means whenever we want to use the led we need a very a uh, very less current to glow the led and accordingly we can have the leds then like a uh, uh, getting dc back out of ac so here we can see the ac provides a means for us to distribute electrical power but most devices are actually want dc so now things are very simple whenever we want to use the uh, like a led then we just we prefer to operate leds on a dc so this is just simply uh, some of the information about LEDs. Now I'll be moving, skipping these all slides because already we have discussed these all slides, like how uh, semiconducting uh, materials or the components can work. So that already we have seen, we have seen this. Now let us focus on today's class where uh, we can discuss about optoelectronic devices. And when we focus on optoelectronic devices, uh, then we can have, as I have mentioned, the solar cell, photo detectors, and LEDs. So, as we have started with LEDs, so let us focus on LED first. 
Okay, before moving uh, further, the first we discuss LED, then uh, like a organic LED, and then we move uh, towards the uh, solar cell, or the we call it the photovoltaics. So uh, let us see some of the introduction about the optoelectronic devices, and the word itself suggests that there is an optical and the electronic component. And if we combine this component, then we can get some specific devices, and that devices we call it as a opto electronic devices so let us proceed uh, electronic devices are all around us but what about devices that exploit opto electronics we simply the devices which can emit the light or the like as we know the photovoltaics or the solar cell which can absorb uh, absorbs the uh, like a uh, radiations and emit the light So every day, optoelectronic technologies range from flat screen display. Now let us see uh, which are the different uh, applications of the optoelectronics. One is the uh, flat screen uh, displays like a TVs, computers, mobile phones. Now earlier, as we know, if we uh, see the display, then the display is of like a uh, CRT base and uh, it was not the flat screen. And after CIT also, we know when the LCD came into the uh, like a market, uh, liquid crystal display, then again, it has some different uh, types of the displays. So uh, when we talk about the flat screen displays, then it is only because of the LED and that screen is made up of the LEDs. The screen of the TVs or the computers or the mobile phones are made up of the LEDs. Uh, then again, through the checkout bar scanners to internet communication links. So these all things, as we know, if we uh, talk about the internet links, then also as we know, we are using the optical fiber. And if we want to signal through the optical fiber, then mostly we are using the LED. Okay, LED or the laser. And again, both are the optoelectronic devices, which means that whatever we are using as a technology today, it is only because of the optoelectronics, we can say. Whatever the faster technology, as just I am uh, delivering this lecture, you, are, you people are listening this lecture. So again, this is possible because of the optoelectronics. As we know, the optical fiber is, because of optical fiber, we are using nowadays 5G also. But earlier, uh, it was uh, like uh, we had 1G, 2G, 3G, and uh, how the speed of internet was there. So friends, uh, this is what kind of the transformation we can see because of the optoelectronics. Then a growing number of healthcare related implementations of optoelectronics are beginning to emerge in biology and medicine. So these optoelectronics are not only restricted to the uh, telephony or the telecommunication or the display uh, display devices or the uh, light uh, like a uh, uh, like solid state lighting, but it is extended to biology and medicine. I will show you some examples how beautifully or how uh, these technologies are more important and beautiful for uh, for curing various diseases also. So uh, like uh, we can see in various countries, like uh, one example I have I'm just giving here in Scotland, we have notable research strength in optoelectronics and efforts are being made to translate this into more widespread and practical application, not in Scotland, but in many countries, even though our group is working in this particular domain. We are working for uh, for the enhancement of uh, uh, enhance, uh, uh, to enhance the performance of the existing LEDs or to form or to get the new material for making the LEDs or some other optoelectronic devices. So let us see uh, how exactly optoelectronic devices works and how it can be made. Because really, uh, if you are just appearing for any of the Competitive examination, then you know, you must know the basic, not only basic, but you must know the advances also, because everybody expect uh, now it's your post graduation is the highest education. After that, uh, means after doing your post graduation, you must know the basic as well as the advances up to certain extent. And that is why here we can see some of the historical perspectives of the optoelectronics, then we can consider semiconductor devices as a bridge between opto, uh, between the electronics and optoelectronics. So the, without semiconductor devices, we cannot imagine the optoelectronic devices. Then uh, we can start this uh, session with 
uh, like a LED and then we proceed to the lasers. Then we can consider the translation of science to technology as I have mentioned. So we can develop the phosphor or so many groups are develop, uh, developing the phosphor. But that phosphor must be utilized for the generation of the LEDs or the devices. Means unless and until it is not uh, uh, converted into technology, then uh, really the research is of uh, 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 very limited uh, uh, use that may be only for the uh, only restricted towards the papers. So we can look at a few representative applications of the optoelectronics and all of these has implications for the uh, like simply we can see we can see here or uh, teaching optoelectronics. Now 2007 2007 marks a century of optoelectronics. Now why it is so? So you can see some of the history of optoelectronics like a Henry J. Round was a key figure in the history of optoelectronics. He was one of the Marconi's assistant in England and later the chief of Marconi research. He published a 24 line note in electrical world reporting a bright glow from carborundum diode. So you can see that is the uh, key, key point. Like you can see here uh, the reference we have 1907. Means in those days he thought about it. Then he was uh, was Henry Round the discover of the LED? Maybe not, but most definitely he can be carried uh, sorry, credited with the discovery of the electroluminescence. And then in any case, you can see you can just you must remember his name, uh, Henry J. Round. In any case, 1907 can be pinpointed as the year of birth for optical electronics or the optoelectronics. So in that way, uh, you can remember how this particular year is important, 1907. So how uh, how this particular year is important in the history. And even though you may be knowing most of the uh, like a science or the quantum mechanics. And again, this is also based on the quantum mechanics, not the classical mechanics. Develop, uh, develop in between, develop in between 1900 to 1950. Like again, 1954, the invention of transistor, uh, like and again, still going on. But the mostly we can see like uh, quantum mechanics and uh, uh, all the quantum mechanics uh, uh, people have given a different science or the theories during this period. As we know about the Einstein, we know about the uh, Heisenberg, we know about the Max Planck and again the Oppenheimer and all. So all have given various theories and these theories are now applicable or utilized for further development of the optoelectronics. Then again, uh, another uh, scientist we can see here, Oleg Vladimirovich. Uh, okay, so the short line of a genius. So we can see Lozev, the short line of life of genius we can see. We must acknowledge the early work. So, a very for uh, for a very small time, he worked early work of pioneer Dr. Oleg Lozev. Uh, he was the son of Russian Imperial Army officer, but the politics of the day denied him any career path in uh, like a Bolshevik Russia. Then, sadly, he died of hunger at the age of 39 during the uh, like a block blockade of Leningrad. So now what he has uh, discovered like Oleg Lozev, the discoverer of the LED. So he was remarkable as self-educated scientist. And his PhD degree was awarded in 19, 1938 by the IFA Institute uh, like a uh, Leningrad without a formal thesis because he had published 43 journal papers and 16 patents in those days. So, uh, like here again, uh, he discovered that a three terminal semiconductor device could be constructed to have characteristics similar to those of the triode wall, but circumstances prevented publications. And uh, Lozev had probably invented the transistors. And as we know, the Berkeley and other two people are known for the invention of transistors but again if we go back in history then he has made some attempt attempt for the development of transistors also then again in mid 1920s he observed light emission from electrically biased 
zinc oxide and silicon carbide crystal rectifier diodes and then again here you can see in history around 1920 abhi to aap 2020 mein use kar rahe sare diodes and leds but around 1920s there are certain evidences of existence of the leds and they called the inverse photoelectric effect so he work out the theory of led operation and studied the emission spectra uh, there are two types of the spectra when we are getting the light emitting diode one is the excitation another one is the emission spectra and uh, whenever we are getting the uh, lights from any of the led so we are getting the emission spectra and even observed spectral narrowing at high drive currents evidence perhaps of the stimulated emission that applies to the lasers and uh, only Uh, that makes laser and led differ the rest of the things are almost similar and notably the first significant blue led reinvented in the 1990s used silicon carbide as i told you by using a silicon carbide now you can see the history and then you can uh, you can see like uh, uh, this 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 people tried way back like uh, uh, 100 years back about the about the, about the concepts even though you may be knowing if i cite the einstein so einstein has given the concept of stimulated emission around 1919 but in reality the first laser was developed in 1960s and that was developed by my man my man and you may be knowing that laser was the ruby laser and again ruby is having the similar technology ruby is again the phosphor which emits the light so friends uh, in that way history really help us to understand help us to understand the help us to understand the basics behind behind science and then that leads for certain inventions now see so you must know there may be some question who is the first inventor and all like that and then there are few names uh, which may be like that and that is why i am just re revising these all concepts over here so leds are now like common place in game consoles remote controls vehicle lights traffic lights and increasingly in domestic lighting means we can see leds now everywhere but the, you can see the invention of the led took how long a lo long period to get the white led and then by the end of this decade the market value is predicted to reach like a uh, 15 bi billion dollars so semiconductor lasers the led processes is at the core of this effect and laser action was first reported in 1962 by four us research group group as i have said about 1962 and uh, there are many everyday applications of the semiconductor lasers uh, in barcode readers as we know whenever we are going to any of the mall they are using barcodes barcode reader so that is one of the application in the cds and dvd players optical carrier sources for communications and internet data so barcode reader then even the laser printer cd and dvd players now it is obsolete mostly we are using the pen drive but earlier to read the cds and dvds laser was used there are optical carrier sources for communications as i have mentioned even we want to uh, pass the signal through optical fiber we must require the leds or the laser and to get the faster internet data So this all uh, can be achieved with the help of only optoelectronic devices, and that is why I am just devoting one lecture for this. So the optical frequency for the optical telecommunications wavelength around uh, 1500 nanometer is extremely high, equivalent to approximately 200 terahertz. You can see here. Uh, major areas of commercial growth in the optoelectronics, like marketable or the at marketplace. so simply uh, uh, yes i means how how it is spread so as we know the flat panel display now we can see in every uh, household so most of the crt based televisions are replaced by leds or the flat panel display now no leds or the no flat panel i uh, means no crt based display uh, is visible in the at the residence of the people uh then like uh, uh, solid state vehicle lighting much more than uh, just uh, like a uh, brake lights you can see uh, earlier there were only brake lights uh, which were used in uh, uh, like uh, vehicles but now you can see the uh, headlamps also 
made up of the leds and how uh, uh, it gives us uh, uh, like a emission uh, that is more prominent as compared to the incandescent lamps so led based sources would reduce the co2 emissions by many millions of tons worldwide so power generation solar cell technologies are progressing steadily steadily for example in germany a new power station based on solar cell is producing 5 milliwatt to power up 800 Uh, 1800 households recent advances in leds for domestic lighting so by way of back uh, background so incandescent lights are not efficient and have a so called luminous efficacy of 13 to 14 lumens per watt then the halogen lighting is a little more efficient at 17 uh, lumen per uh, watt so fluorescent lights are significantly better with typical luminous efficacies of 60 to 70 lumen per watt and the more recently white leds have achieved so this data is most important for you as a uh, as aspirants of uh, net and set so white leds have achieved 100 lumen per watt and in the laboratory figures up to 300 lumen per watt have been reported for tailored warm white light uh, led lighting so now uh, let us discuss about organic semiconductors so uh, we will uh, shift from inorganic leds to the organic leds so we can now have organic materials that have uh, exploitable semiconducting characteristics and these features are you can see the uh, why it is it gives us the emission it gives us the emission because of the conjugated molecules so if we go in organic chemistry then we can understand the chains how they are conjugated with each other then novel types of semiconductors and easy processing schemes again the synthesis of organic material is uh, somewhat uh, sometime we can say it is tedious sometime we can say it is easy and again the uh, led uh, compatibility and a uh, physical flexibility is also possible if we prepare leds by using the organic materials so these are the uh, some uh, added advantages of the organic semiconductors uh, then uh, like organic light emitting diodes you can see how the layers are there uh, we must know uh, how it can be prepared so these diagrams illustrate the basic o led concepts so here you can see we are having the substrate then we can have the transparent contact in between that then we are using the polymer it's organic material and then we can have the metal contact and once uh, we excite uh, this material by providing uh, electricity then we know how it will goes to uh, like excited state and the lifetime of the uh, uh, like a, a atom at excited state is very less and that is why atom wanted to come back to the ground state and while coming from excited state to the ground state it emits the light that is what what the fundamental principles of the uh, leds so examples of some oled devices so here you can see the kodak has uh, prepared or applied oled screen in their uh, camera then sony ultra 13 13 uh, display is also made up of the oled and an epson wide screen display so these are some of the examples uh, examples of the uh, like a companies who have adopted oled into their devices adopted and incorporated now again other applications of oleds or the leds let me discuss here photodynamic therapy like a pdt now here you can see uh, in medical science also it has huge applications so uh, like uh, this is uh, one of the cream uh, prepared cream is applied to the site of the skin tumor here you can see amino uh, amino linolenic acid so the ala is uh, metabolized to light sensitive pp9 a uh, predominantly within the tumor and now here you can see how the tumors are burn and after that uh, exposure to light induce, induces the pp9 to produce singlet molecular oxygen that leads to local cell kill within the tumor and that can only kill the local cells within the tumor and as we know how we are using the radiation therapy for the cancer patient so instead of that 
uh, we can use this type of the technology uh, to reduce the uh, means uh, to uh, uh, to cure the skin cancer and all the sensitized tumor region is the is then exposed to intense light from a source such as a laser or led here also you can see a typical scar free outcome from the photodynamic therapy or pdt of a skin cancer so you can see here so the entire things are removed with the help of the laser and all uh, like uh, cancer cells uh, were killed with the help of the laser and here you can see now we can't see anything any patches over here like earlier so these are the added advantages of the development of the opto electronic devices and that is why just i am suggest i here uh, we are discussing about opto electron device as a physicist again potential of oleds for pdt so now uh, for this particular pdt pdt means uh, photodynamic therapy so how uh, this particular oleds will be useful so here you can see oleds have the advantages of so what are the advantages of oled uh, so it has uniform illumination you can see the illumination of oled is uniform as in comparison to the inorganic leds then lightweight so can be on so on the uh, as we know on the size of the leds uh, then the relatively low intensity for longer treatment yes so reduce pain increase effectiveness then low cost disposable we can use once and then we can dispose it out then uh, witness accept to pdt okay widens access uh, to widens access uh, to pdt so as we have seen the pdt here photodynamic therapy a simple wearable power supply so power supply is again uh, means the power required to glow the oled is very less and that is why we can use that by using the battery like a uh, uh, battery which gives power to our mobile then ambulatory treatment at, at you can see at work or at home or we can have the treatment like that means wherever we are we can take the treatment with the help of oled so here you can see Here uh, we can see the devices uh, like typical device application cycle. So devices are applied here. Then device uh, you can see on during the normal daily activities. And right here the power uh, is uh, like supplied to these devices. And then uh, that device can be disposed of. So every day we can use the new device because it's a cheaper and the most effective. So in that way we can use it. Then here you can see the skin cancer treated with the OLED based PDT. So uh, this is the uh, like a cancerous cell and here it is a treated skin. So effective treatment with reduce uh, scarring and pain, scaring and pain. So like now again how it works. Uh, like uh, simply uh, as we know uh, if we want to form the LED then we use the spontaneous emission. Spontaneous emission means what? If uh, uh, like atom is at the ground state, it gets excited by some uh, like external photons, then it will go to excited state. But the lifetime at excited state is very less and that is why atom will come down to the ground state. And then again here we can see the consider an excited atom. This excited atom will relax over some characteristics. Then if photons are produced during the relaxation process, this is called as a spontaneous emission. And this emission process is independent of the external influences means once this light will be uh, like uh, acquired or like uh, uh, absorbed then uh, it will be uh, it will emit the uh, emissions like spontaneously and again as we know as i told you the einstein has suggested the concept of stimulated emission and because of only uh, his suggestion or his theory we are having the laser that is light amplification by stimulated emission of uh, radiation uh, in reality about 1962 or the 1960s and now we know uh, the lasers uh, lasers are being used in almost all the fields from medical science to industry to the uh, household to the uh, like electronic devices and everywhere so here how the process is that like this is the incident photon will be absorbed by the atom then atom goes to the uh, like excited state then again, atom wanted to come back to the ground state, but again, we can create a metastable state. 
where atom can stay for the longer duration again it will be interacted with some emitted photons and because of this number of photons the energy of the emitted atom will be more and in that way so here we can get the avalanche multiplication and because of that we can get the stimulated emissions so an excited atom can be stimulated to emit a photon this process is called as stimulated emission the stimulated photon is an exact copy of the photon that induced the transition and a repeat of this process leads to the optical gain which represents the basics of laser action so simply here we can see how we are moving towards another optical devices and that another optical device is the laser so uh, like here we can see the stimulated emission provides optical gain uh, photons reflected by the resonator mirrors cause an avalanche of stimulated emission along with the axis of the resonator then we know here uh, we are using the cavity or the we call it as a resonating cavity and here we are using the two mirrors uh, in between that cavity is there and then we are using the pumping and then again in between that the uh, like a photons which is being generated will get to and fro and because of that uh, their intensity will enhances and uh, uh, one side the mirror is partially silvered and because of that it will come out as a laser so this is what uh, the way this is the way by which we can prepare the laser then photons reflected by the resonator mirror cause an avalanche of stimulated emission along the axis of resonator a high intensity beam of light thus builds up in the laser resonator so like simply you can see uh, this is the basic difference in between the led and the laser laser gives us the high intensity beam whereas led gives, gives us the low intensity beam because in led this type of mechanism is not there okay to generate the light so it's a, a typical mechanism of stimulated emission of radiation so in case of led we are having a spontaneous emission of radiation so a collimated and directional laser beam emerges from a partially transmitting exit mirror like uh, another uh, laser i will uh, discuss i would like to discuss here like semiconductor diode laser chip we have different types of the laser gaseous laser gas laser or the uh, solid state laser we, we are having the ruby laser and other other also uh, then the semiconductor diode chip laser laser chip so here you can see how the laser is generated from the semiconductor diode mostly nowadays this semiconductor diode laser chip is used so here you can see the p type uh, gaalas material is here the 200 nanometer active gaas layer then n type gaal uh, that gallium aluminum uh, as layers is here so clued or clued and coated uh, faces uh, facets acts as the mirrors in a diode laser now here you can see only these faces will work as a mirror and this is the preferred source for optical communication as i have uh, mentioned uh, this particular semiconductor uh, laser can be considered as a preferred source in so source for optical communication uh, those uh, these days the absorption of light by major tissue chromophores so simply uh, we can see here the so we can see here how light is uh, like absorb and uh, uh, like wavelength versus absorption coefficient now so here you can see the illumination of a hand and wrist area with light light of 700 nanometer here you can see 800 nanometer and 900 nanometer so we know that in 700 there is a visible region after that as we know the nir region uh, begins so regions illustrates clearly the deeper penetration of the longer wavelength into the biological tissues so here uh, we can see how clearly we can uh, we can uh, see the tissues over here if we use the longer wavelengths then again we can move ahead uh, beyond 900 like uh, some lasers so we can get at 1050 okay so we are also working on these lasers here also uh, some of the treatment uh, treatment of varicose veins with the help of laser you can see here this is the patient uh, having varicose veins and uh, before and now this is the after one 
So here the laser use uh, produces green pulses of light for strong absorption in blood, but having durations match to the tissue thermal relaxation time. And because of that, instead of damaging the tissue, uh, it has been cured like uh, varicose veins can be cured and uh, the now here that patient is uh, living his normal life after the treatment. Here also some of the applications of the laser, skin resurfacing using the lasers. So these are all applications, there may be some MCQs. Is this the treatment can be possible with the help of laser? Then you must say the answer is yes. So laser skins, skin resurfacing is becoming the method of choice preferable to chemical peels or dermabrasion. So all a pulse carbon dioxide laser is used. So here you can see the before, here you can see the after. How uh, uh, how beautifully uh, she uh, she's looking. We can now consider digital optoelectronics. So now the digital optoelectronics, lasers can be made to produce either constant intensity beams or sequence of discrete optical pulses sequence of discrete optical pulses or optical digits like here we can see the pulse or this is the continuous with, uh, with respect to time then why might uh, we wish to use the optical digits like why why we wish to use the optical so just two minutes Uh, So the laser pulses or optical digits can have very high peak intensity. So that is why uh, we must remember this. Does the light impulses can induce either single photon or rather more interesting multiple photon interaction? It is also possible. And the advantages is that advantage is strong near infrared absorption in tissue with interactions involving two or three photons that are equivalent to green or blue UV light and the average power or heating effect can be can be at a modest level to avoid the tissue damage. So these are the advantages of the optical digits. And then the ultra short pulses uh, just for the picoseconds 10 to the power minus 12 seconds and the femtoseconds 10 to the power minus 15 seconds also imply sh short exposure times and so we have ultra fast or snapshot photography. So an example of multiple photon excitation, you can see how it is uh, how it is there. So simply uh, this multi photon excitation is localized both in space and time. So uh, with respect to space and time, we can see the interactions occur primarily at the beam focus for the ultra short light pulses and the penetration of long wavelength light, but interaction may involve two to three photons. So here simply you can see uh here like uh uh we can see the how the arrangement of mirror is there then the sample fluorescence to detector then the excitation beam is here then the high numerical aperture microscope objectives and again with the help of that we can see here how the uh, images can be captured so and the mechanism is here already we have one photon excitation it's a ground state so like uh, if we are using the 350 nanometer light then it goes to like here we can see excited state. So sometimes uh, we can excite some materials by UV and we can see the visible emissions. So here you can see the 350 nanometer is the UV excitation and here we can see the emission is 450 nanometer. It's a one photon excitation. Now here you can see the two photon excitation. So initially we have used the 700 nanometer. Then again another photon. Uh, we have used like 700 nanometer and then here we can see the 450 nanometer light is produced and this is called as the up conversion mechanism so here energy is more 
so here as we know the energy is uh, like energy means here we are using uh, simply low low energy uh, photons and the high energy high wavelength photons to emit the low uh, means uh, like a low wavelength and the high frequency photons here also you can see the three photon excitation one photon of 105 nanometer another photon of 105 nanometer another third photon and then finally we can have the 450 nanometer so here in three mechanism we can see in very first mechanism we can get the light like a uh, uh, leds but here in another mechanism we can generate the laser so because here we are uh, exciting uh, uh, the atoms by giving multiple photons and that is the beauty of production of the laser by using the phosphor material now here we can see the multi photon excitation for the treatment of the cancer cancer tumorous so uh, here you can see prior to treatment how it is immediately following the treatment and two months after the treatment we can see some patches over here so uh, like a melanoma on skin in mice so it's uh, like example the laser pulses are in near infrared 1047 nanometer uh, again this laser can be generated uh, by doping the neodymium uh, nd uh, nd uh, into some host material but three photon absorption is exploited for the photodynamic therapy pdt the snapshots in the millisecond uh, time or the regime so uh, simply you can see the clarity also with the help of some laser 1887 very old peak is there so flash photography with microsecond exposures so the motion can be uh, effectively frozen using the short pulses of the light for example using one microsecond flashes from a xenon flash bulb some of the pictures we can see here an example of frozen motion so uh, at mit they have studied around 1964 concept of again we can see the prompt imaging uh, imaging that is also uh, possible with the help of the uh, laser so an ultra short laser pulse passing through a scattering medium carries image information via three components as illustrated so simply you can see we are having the input then it will get diffused uh, like a snake like and or the ballistic then we can see the structure and finally we can see the image uh, form or the diffuse or uh, like uh, output we can get it then again seeing through raw chicken so we can see the photograph of two cross metal needles 0.5 mm diameter the needles viewed through a six mm slab of raw chicken breast in ordinary illumination but here you can see snapshot image of the needles using femtosecond illuminating and getting the pulses here we can see clearly we can see some uh, traces of the needle uh, into uh, into the like a raw chickens we can see here the laser beam propagation in optical fibers uh, as we know the uh, many kilometer lengths of the glass can be possible so intensity so either continuous or the pulse any type of the laser can be used uh, then focusability effective coupling and propagation of the laser beam in optical fibers so that can be transmitted and many application in endoscopy and tele or the data communications we can have then simply here we can uh, we can have the optical fiber so uh, when uh, laser uh, is passing through optical fiber as we know this is the acceptance cone with certain acceptance angle and only that much light can be accepted through the optical fiber and that is why laser can be considered as one of the best source source uh, to send the signal to optical fiber so here we can see uh, simply how optical fiber can be made up of and how small it is as everybody knows. So friends, another thing is at the end we are uh, moving to concluding uh, concluding today's session. So like uh, optoelectronic communication. So we can see here. Uh, everybody knows uh, to, uh, in today's context or in uh, nowadays uh, almost communication is based on the optoelectronics. So 
Uh, this is in case of optoelectronic communications, uh, we can send the signal then uh, how uh, this particular signal and here we can uh, listen also. So simply uh, need to data transport like that. And again, uh, an application in biology involves the poor, uh, like a portion of the cells to provide access to low penetration drugs. So this is also another application that the corrective eye surgery using the laser pulses. So it's again one of the medical application of the laser okay so uh, correction of the vision can be done with the help of the pulse lasers so you can see here then femtosecond laser based eye surgery optoelectronics for peace weapons decommissioning so for this purpose also optoelectronics can be used so these are another advantages and uh, uh, as uh, so here friends uh, uh, in today's session we have discussed uh, various photo uh, like a uh, opto electronic devices in which we have focused mostly on the leds and the laser leds oleds and laser and in next lecture uh, we will be trying to discuss about the we will just try to discuss about uh, rest of the uh, uh, like topic uh, like photovoltaics simply solar photovoltaics it's most important topic uh, topic of discussion when we are uh, when we uh, think about optoelectronics so when we think about optoelectronics then we must think about the solar photovoltaics and as we know uh, nowadays energy uh, harnessing energy uh, from the solar it's uh, is is a hot topic of today's and then again how the materials can be coated and how much intensity uh, is there so that can be uh, discussed in next lecture. Lecture. So thank you everyone uh, for being with us uh, for this particular session, and thank you Barty for giving me an opportunity. Thank you. So Dr. Nilesh Ugemuge signing off.